So, I mean, this is a rather artificial benchmark, isn't it? I mean, why should he live up to anything in 100 days? I mean, this is... We talked about this in a US context many times. And why, does, why on earth would 100 days matter? Sure. So this tradition started with FDR way back in the 30s. It is arbitrary, but I think it's also an important benchmark. And it's one where Trump has now said it's a ridiculous standard. But when he was a campaigner, he said, I've got a contract with the American voter, and I'm going to sign these 10 major pieces of legislation in my first 100 days. Well, tomorrow is day 100, and he has signed none of them. Uh, he has done nothing on the legislative side that's a major accomplishment. So I think the question is, is all of the optimism for business, a lot of people were very excited about Trump and the promise of Trump. Mm. Was that optimism misplaced? The 100-day benchmark would suggest yes, because none of the legislative achievements promised have so far come to fruition. Uh, you, you mentioned there the optimism. And I've got here a chart that shows, uh, this shows uh, what we saw from high tax rated companies in the white gaining at the time of the election and then coming down and actually losing the gains that they'd made at the time of the election. And then this is the Russell 2000 um, uh, gaining um, and then losing some of that momentum, but still a little bit of optimism built in there. But coming back to the 100 days you know, thing, you say that he was using it, but nobody gets to make another decision on the president after 100 days, do they? So, you know, maybe he's got the long game in mind. He wasn't brought in as president because he was going to do things the way people did them in the past, and he's just running up against some teething problems. Well, that's possible, but I mean, the 100 day benchmark is supposed to be a barometer. It is arbitrary. We know it's arbitrary. It's three and a half months. There's no reason why he couldn't accomplish things in the fourth month, right? But Obama, after 50 days, had signed four major bills into law. And Trump, after 100 days, has signed zero. So I think that's something that tells you he's got a problem, especially because the comparison is fair. The Democrats controlled everything when Obama came to power. The Republicans control everything with Trump in But power. he is an outsider in terms of politics, isn't he? He's running things more like a CEO, and that's going to rub people in Washington well, up the wrong way, isn't it? That's going to annoy many people, but it doesn't necessarily tell us that he won't have success in the future. Well, this is the problem that Trump has inflicted on himself, though, because his campaign message was not just that I'm going to be another politician, it's that I'm going to be better and faster at getting things done than politicians. The exact opposite has been true. So he, his own words are used against him. I mean, that's, this is where, you know, when you say it's an arbitrary standard, he set the standard for himself. Uh, he, set, he signed the contract with the American voter saying what he would do. So, you know, I'm not somebody who wants to sit here and say, gotcha politics, you know, you didn't do what you said in 100 days. But, you know, he, he said, this is what I will do. So I think it's fair for people to then hold him accountable for those promises. Also keep in mind that he is historically unpopular. At this stage, at 100 days, Obama was at a 65% approval rating. The lowest in American history since the 1950s that a president has had at 100 days is 55%, and that was Clinton. Mm -hmm. Trump was at 39% yesterday. Is there any implication, because I've seen these statistics yeah. before and they're fascinating, but is there any implication of that? Does it yes. matter? Absolutely. And the reason it matters is because we are now about 20 months away from the midterm elections where the president's party always loses seats. And Republicans are starting to worry about the fact that Trump's unpopularity may cost them their re-election prospects. And that means he's going to have even harder time getting legislation through the Republican majorities because they're going to think, maybe I don't want to side with the guy who's the most unpopular president in history. And that's a real risk for him because if you want to get a health care law or a tax reform law that's controversial, that's polling badly through Congress, you need the president's coattails to carry you to re-election, and Trump cannot offer that to anybody in his caucus. He's done. He has. He has had success in some things, and that he's written quite a lot of executive orders. Other uh, uh, presidents have written quite a few executive orders. There's been quite a lot of fanfare around those. Where does his focus go from here? Then, if we look ahead into those coming 20 months, where has he got to focus? I mean, healthcare is the big, the big thing, big item on the to-do list that's seen as a bit of a blocker for others. Well, Trump, Trump made a mistake here because what he should have done when he got into office was an infrastructure bill. It's the only thing in his agenda that actually genuinely could have gotten Democrat support. He but could would have... Republicans want to pay for that? Yeah, I think that a lot of Republicans are willing, especially with the cheap financing that would be possible, that, that they would say, this is a good investment, it's a necessary investment. He could have extended an olive branch and gotten something done. Instead, he went to the divisive aspects of health care and tax reform, which are some of the thorniest issues Washington can deal with. And what we've seen is exactly what we expected, which was they fell flat.